So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about um, the GNU Image Manipulation Program, or GIMP. Um, it's basically a open source equivalent of Photoshop. You can install it and run it on many different systems, uh, including Linux, um, but also Windows and uh, Mac OS as well. It's a very powerful tool, um, and we'll also do a, a sort of in-depth tutorial about how to use some of the key functions just for basic photo editing. So what we're going to run through in here is uh, what is GIMP, where to get it, um, just a basic layout. Um, it's really one of those tools you have to have hands-on experience and spend a lot of time with to really get good at, uh, just like Photoshop. Um, but once you start to use it and uh, you go through, for most anything that almost anyone at home would want to do, it's, it's definitely uh, very capable. And for a lot of uh, photographers and people who are doing professional work, um, you can actually get some pretty good results from it. Um, and then we're going to do a quick run through of an image crop and uh, we're going to do an introduction of paths, how to use paths to uh, highlight and select an image uh, in minute detail and then remove the background. Um, then also play with layers and masks and explain how to how to adjust and, and change the image. Uh, up front, I'm going to say that the final result is not something I'm super happy with, but uh, it's something which I did fairly quickly um, just for this tutorial. And there's you know, anyone who's an artist out there can definitely do a much better job, it, but you just have to spend some time with the program. So, first of all, what is GIMP? Um, it's definitely not the guy from Pulp Fiction. Uh, for any, those of you who get the reference, I um, hope you have a good chuckle with that. For those of you who don't get the reference, I can't really re recommend you go Google it. Um, but... Uh, in all seriousness, GIMP uh, stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program. GNU or NEW is a, um, a sort of an open source uh, team of uh, a lot of open source developers and tool sets. It's been around for several years, um, at least, I think GIMP has been around for at least 20 years at this point, if not longer. Um, it's open source and it's a free Photoshop replacement. Um, it's cross-platform, so you can run it on all the major operating systems. Um, so for anyone who just wants to experience photo editing on a more intricate level it's definitely something where you can get started with without having to to you know go out and buy a license um though it may not be quite as robust as all the tools of the adobe creative software suite definitely not um but for most sort of light comp uh compositions cropping uh changing colors uh you know adjusting the hues um changing curves uh doing any sort of background removal doing layers um, I've been using it a lot recently to also do like GIF images. Like if I just wanted to do like a quick little animation for a PowerPoint, I can use that and put it through different layers. Every single layer becomes a frame in, in GIMP and you can export it, the file as a, as a dot .gif file. So it's, it has a lot of functionality and features. So I find it really useful. Um, so where to get it? You just go to this website, uh, www.gimp.org uh, slash downloads. Um, once you install it, it'll look something like this. This is the latest 2.1 version. Um, the video that I'm showing is the, I think, 1.9. Um, there's not a huge amount of differences between the two, except that sometimes there's a dark emit, dark background or uh, dark ID, um, and then sometimes there's a light ID, and you can change that in the settings. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to point out is... Um, this image right here, when you first install GIMP, sometimes it, it splits it into different windows. Like this toolbox over here would be one individual window. This main image here would be another separate window. This other image here would be another separate window. For those of you who use Photoshop and Mac OS, it's kind of the same sort of attempt at that kind of layout. I myself, before having everything just in one big window, uh, I feel just a little bit more comfortable that way. Um, and you can change it here by clicking under windows and you can say full window layout and that gives you this, this, uh, layout. Um, so here's the basic layout. You have your toolbar up the top. It has all the different settings that you can use. These are the quick tools. So you can, you know, highlight or you can go over here and crop. You can, um, add paths over here with the path tool. You can add text. You can smudge, smear, uh, band-aid. So you can do like blemish editing, um, that's something that I have to use a lot because my face looks like a piece of pizza. You have, you know, scaling your layers, um, all these types of options. Uh, here is where you would then manipulate your layers. Um, you can switch between these pages. You have the layers page, channels page, and paths page. Um, you probably spend most of your time with the layers page. You know, this is layer one, this is layer two. I want to, you know, make it 
invisible or I want to make it visible or I want to duplicate it, that's all done over here. Um, and then all of the more detailed options for the, the any individual tool that you pick is going to be show off over in the bottom. And you can adjust the opacity of the tool or you can adjust the opacity of the layer to make it like more transparent or half transparent. So again, very functional, um, very similar to Photoshop, if not exactly the same. Um, again, Photoshop does have a, not a, a host of, you know, robust features, which is why it's the go-to photo editor editing tool, but there's still a lot that you can do with GIMP. So we're going to do a quick run through. What we're going to show is, um, I just grabbed offline. I don't own the, the rights or, or take credit for this photo or anything. This is just for the purposes of the tutorial. I just grabbed a picture of an iPhone. Uh, I'm going to go through, I'm going to crop it so that we get this sort of background here. Then we're going to duplicate the layer to do sort of like a drop shadow or a, um, sort of a mirror effect. Uh, it really depends on what you, what you want to do, but you can sort of, uh, copy, copy a cropped layer, duplicate it, uh, flip it, and then, you know, do all sorts of manipulations that you want to get it into some sort of, uh, new effect. We can change the background and we'll do all that in just a, in just a minute. So. Uh, this should be a really quick tutorial, uh, try to keep it hands on and hopefully it'll be useful for all of you. So opening up uh, GIMP, we just go to our sort of app drawer and we uh, try to find it. You can either scroll through and look for it, pick a new manipulation program, or you can just search for it at the bottom, open it up. Now this is GIMP 2.8. Um, here you'll see I already have it in the window mode. So you can see everything in here is is already set up, and you can see we have the the tools on the side. Um, so we can pick a tool. Uh, you can sort of run through all of these. So there's the crop tool, there's the alignment tool. Uh, unfortunately, in 2.11, um, which is the latest version, if you download it, uh, some of the pictures of these tools change. So, but all the tools are the same, and the functionality is all the same. It's just getting used to a different icon stack. So you can have. All these sort of selectors, free select, uh, they have the magic wand selector as well, and the path tool. So we're gonna just pick an image, um, again, just for, just for demo purposes, randomly, I'm just gonna pick a picture of an iPhone. And, uh, here you can see it's just a picture from, from, I think Engadget was the original source. Uh, I don't own the copyrights to this image, I'm just using it for, as an example for what you can do. Uh, the reason I'm using this versus saying like, a cute bunny or a cute dog is I just find it much easier to crop and and take off the background of a product rather than like a, a dog or anything that has hair and, and freckles um, but see you can take it you basically just copy paste you put in the layer um, once you have it in there you can then rotate it and start manipulating the layer um, so you can rotate it and try to make this a little bit more upright then once we have that over here uh, I can create a new layer and this will be our background layer so just say background, create the layer. Okay, now move it down so it's below the other one. And then we fill it in. So we can fill it in with the background color. In this case, you can see it's it's white. So we make a white background. Then we're gonna start uh, removing, removing the background. So what you do with the path tool is you just pick a dot and you pick a next dot and then the next dot and then after you pick, if you want to change how that shape looks, you just click and drag, click, drag. And then you can sort of manipulate the shape. If you want to go back and manipulate any other dot, you can just click on it and you can change the position. If you want to go back on a dot and change how that uh, curve is, you, you do a control kit, click. And then again, you just click, drag, click, drag. I'm going to speed this up in just a minute um, so that it doesn't take up too much time, but essentially uh, using paths is, is a bit of a, this is really kind of an art and it takes a lot of time and a lot of practice to get used to it. I spent a lot of time doing these types of product images uh, in a former life. So uh, control click to, to select the next, the next one, then move forward. I think this is where a lot of people who are coming from Photoshop get a little bit upset with GIMP is uh, I think the default in Photoshop is alt tab to do these types of reselect uh, each point and in GIMP it's control. Um, I'll also put uh, a full sort of GIMP tutorial on their website and some of the, the commands and hotkeys that they have. I'll link that in the description uh, below the video. 
So now we're speeding this up a little bit so that we can go forward and, and finish the outline. So a lot of a lot of really detailed work and a lot of manipulation. Again, this is knowing it and doing it is two different things, and this is just sort of where uh, you have to sort of futz around with the images. Um, if this was a higher res image, it would be much better too. It wouldn't be quite as fuzzy because this is just a quick grab from the internet, so everything looks really blurred once you once you start to zoom in. And then control click to to close the path. That's where you can link link the final the first the first dot to the to the last dot. Then once we're in the path, um, give it a name. Giving it a name in GIMP helps make sure that the path is stays saved in the in the project. So as soon as you put a name in, then GIMP, and the next time you create a path, it won't overwrite that path because you already named it. So you sort of marked it that this is an important path. Uh, click selection from path, then just copy paste. Uh, right click to create a new layer. Uh, make the previous layer invisible, and you basically just remove the background. So that's how we do that. Um, then once we have this, now uh, we unclick the paths, we move to another tool, we can just move this, this object around, we can change it, uh, the positioning of it that we want. So we're just moving this over. Um, we can then crop, so we can just crop the whole image. Now crop is always the entire image. If you want to change just a layer, you can change the layer size or the layer canvas in the settings. Okay, so that that's pretty much a cropped image of uh, this red iPhone. Now we can we can change it around. Like if we wanted to try to straighten it out a bit, we can use the rotate tool again, and we can just sort of manually straighten this out. It's a little bit straighter. It's a little bit of an angle. And then what we can also do is duplicate it and try to give it either sort of like a glass effect or um, a shadow by taking that layer and then uh, changing it around. So what we can do is take this new layer, which is an exact copy of the layer that we just we just made, flip it vertically, and then we can move it. So we position it into place. And then this is where it really gets into the art. And this is also the area where I wasn't super pleased with how this image eventually turned out. But if you futz around with it long enough, you'll definitely get get some good results. You have to sort of rotate it and then add in add in the path and then we can do the transparency. So you can sort of see how that looks. You can just try to line it up on the angles. You can just sort of eyeball it. We move that together. We have a bit of this the two of them almost touching, so it'll look a little bit how like a mirror effect is. Um, you know, a lot of advertisements of these product images that you see um, are pretty much done the same way, but they're done by someone much more skilled than I am. Um, what I'm doing here is creating a layer mask. What the layer mask does, it allows us to apply certain effects to the image of the layer without having the layer overpainted. It just takes what is already in the layer and then applies this effect. So what I'm doing is adding a gradient to it in the layer mask, and this is what gives you sort of this this slight blur effect, or what, what you might think you'd see if you had this phone, say, pasted on a piece of glass when you took the picture of it, where it just sort of gets a little bit of a reflection sort of going. Um, and what I did here is this is the perspective tool, so this is where you can uh, change the shape, uh, but I need to click back on the layer first, not the layer mask for the perspective tool. And then from here you can you can adjust it. So if we wanted to say, okay, well this is really a piece of glass, what's the sort of angle that we re would really look at it? And again, this is this is something where you can just play with for hours. Um, depending on your skill level, how accustomed you are with the tool and sort of, you know, your overall eye for these types of images. You can do something like this, so you get a little bit of a bend. I almost like there was like a little bit of glass, and you're sort of looking at this as it shines forward. And we can redo our gradient on it. And again, the angles, uh, unfortunately, were just not really working out so well for me on this on this one. 
but you can get all sorts of effects. Um, hopefully, uh, watching me sort of mess around with it also gives you some some pointers of, of you know some of the things that you can do to sort of adjust adjust the image and also become familiar with the tool through my repetition. Uh, and I s sped up that that little bit so that we don't waste don't use up too much of your time. Then what we can also do is we can just adjust the color of it. So say we go to the hue and saturation, we can change the color of this layer and make it, you know, something which could be a completely different color that you want. And then if we drop down the saturation to zero, you kind of get a gray image. So now it almost looks like there's a shadow of the phone rather than the actual phone. Obviously, um, you could probably do with another blur. You could probably blur it a little bit just to give it more of that shadowy, shadowy effect and then probably paint in a little bit of black underneath the phone as well so that you have sort of a hard shadow and then the softer shadow behind it. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time doing all this right now. But again, just playing around with the angles of it, trying to get it to look a little bit more realistic. It really comes down to a lot of a lot of work and eyeballing of, of working with the perspective tools, working with the coloring tools, working with the path tools. All of these uh, features come together in order to form sort of a final image. Okay, so I think that looks reasonable. And then, um, what you can do here is you can uh, change the background again because it's just a separate layer. All of these things are just built on top of each other, but the sides are all completely transparent. So you can change the background. We could just add like a gradient. And we want to give it like this sort of light effect to it. Um, ideally, the, I, if I was like really trying to do this uh, in, in depth, I'd probably try to do like two separate layers. One sort of where, where the phone is almost touching that shadow and the other uh, behind it so that you have sort of this two layer effect so you actually see it almost as if it would be on glass rather than you know just this this random background. Um, once once you sort of have something that looks reasonable, something that you kind of think is okay, you can save the file. Uh, the file for GIMP is a X, XCF um, and then you just you know put it in uh, your folder so you can create a new folder and then change the file name. Um, the XCF is the is the GIMP image uh, file extension. So iPhone remove background. Okay, then we can click save. And then if you want to export it, you can make it pretty much any file type you want. There's nothing, there's no like selection of file types. You can just type in the file type. So if I want a JPEG or PNG or a TIFF file or, um, you know, even if I wanted, uh, in this case, we're not doing an animation, but you could also do like a GIF file as well. So, so yeah, I'll, I'll save this as a JPEG and we export it. Um, it'll ask you what kind of level of quality. Uh, the default is 90, uh, but you can push that up to 100 or you can take it down. Um, and that just affects the overall, uh, sort of pixelation of the, of the image, how, how sharp it is after when you, once you export it. So we can open that up and we have the image. So move the background, sort of completely change it around. Uh, again, it's just a random image online, uh, just showing sort of the functionality of GIMP. I don't own the copyrights or anything. Uh, thank you very much for your time.